Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. You're going to do this because I don't want to die of cancer. Chris Weir of Fargo is trying to raise awareness after being diagnosed with colon cancer when she was 43. That used to be rare for people that age. New research shows colon cancer is on the rise in people under 50. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer explains what the woman wants you to do to get ahead of this very serious form of cancer. There were um, two cancerous tumors growing inside of my colon. Chris Weir is no stranger to cancer. First, she had endometrial cancer, and then later down the road, it was in her colon. She was diagnosed with colon cancer at 43. I start having, you know, just bloody stools, you know, signs and symptoms of what could have been hemorrhoids or just anything. Weir tells us and she was under 50, the doctor did not suggest a colonoscopy. But she says she knew something wasn't right and demanded one. I had to ask for it because I was under 50 and I said, listen, I've already had cancer once. Weir is just one of many patients that are changing the face of colon cancer. Research shows cases among people 50 and older going down. But for people like Weir who are under 50, those rates are going the wrong direction. A lot of different factors. It's not so much age anymore because cancer doesn't discriminate. A new study reveals a reason for the increase isn't that easy to explain. Some research says people could be messing up their guts with antibiotics or a more modern diet. It does say high cancer risk. Yep. Okay. As for Weir, she is now cancer free. She had to go through yeah, rounds of chemotherapy really and her colon was removed. I have nothing left. I have an ileostomy bag now. But I'm alive. But Weir's not letting In that fact, slow her down. She still works full time and eats a normal diet. And she tells us she's had some major support through this whole journey. No, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have my faith and, you know, the Lord standing beside me through it all. But now she wants to help others. Be proactive. Talk to your doctor. Explain your situation. Get a colonoscopy done. Weir tells us if you ever have symptoms similar to hers or cancer is common in your family, Talk to your doctor. She says she is forever thankful she did and asked for that colonoscopy. In Fargo, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. Colon cancer is the fourth most common cancer and the second deadliest type of cancer behind lung cancer. People around Northwood, North Dakota are feeling the loss of a historic bridge that collapsed under the weight of a semi-tractor trailer yesterday. The semi's weight was around three times the bridge's limit. The bridge spanned the Goose River in rural Grand Forks County and is on the National Register of Historic Places. You know, my mom passed away just a year ago and I could hear her calling for me from here. We only lived a couple hundred yards away. It's kind of sad kind of hurts. The driver of the semi was not injured. An engineer tells us putting up a new bridge could cost a million dollars. A paramedic who survived a deadly helicopter crash says he's taking his recovery one step at a time. Josh Duda, the lone survivor of a medical helicopter crash last month at the Brainerd Airport, posted on Caring Bridge that he's come a long way in the last three weeks. The crash killed two other people on board. Duda told investigators they could see the runway surface and lights beneath the fog that the helicopter spun to the right and hit the ground. We are well into summer vacation and yet the high school sports season is still alive and well. Some kids are competing but not on any court or field, it's on the water. I saw for myself how they are enjoying themselves and met the man who is making a difference in their lives. Well, I'm going to give you the scorecard here and you guys have one. Okay, you're in good shape. Kyle Agri loves the outdoors, including fishing, so much so that he's committed himself to giving kids in the area a chance to experience it for themselves. Okay, come on this in. This is Derek. Right. Hey guys, I'm gonna go up here. Kyle had a big hand in forming the Lake Agassiz High School Fishing League with teams from West Fargo, Cheyenne, Fargo North, South, and Davies. Some of these student anglers are involved in sports, they're involved in drama, they're involved in music, but some of them aren't, and so this is this is a chance for this to be their thing. Fish it all the way on the bottom like a 45. Have you fished a sponsor before? Yeah. Their thing means the teams head out to area lakes in separate boats with volunteer drivers who take them where they want to fish, let them use what they want to use for bait, and catch, record, 22. and release fish. 
<laughs> is there a rivalry? Do you feel it? Yeah. Just trying to get out there and just beat them. <laughs> it's a real competition. Yeah, it's it's uh, when you put on the jersey with your logo on it, it makes it a little bit more uh, important for you and your and your guys in the boat. How does it make you feel, Tom? Fantastic. I love it. For Agri, the fishing league is filling a void in his life. On the right side. His kids are grown and off on their own. He says after watching them in activities during school, he wants to help others to do the same. And since he grew up fishing, this was a natural. Kyle, Kyle is a one of a kind. I mean, he's a, he's a gem. He definitely is. You can, it, it, it's something that you can see it, you can hear it, and it's, it's really part of his DNA. I get excited when I see these kids come back in at the end of the night with a big smile on their face. They're telling stories. They're talking about what happened in the boat. And then even more so when they start talking about going back and meeting with their teammates. And with any experience at this age, these anglers will be able to take what they've learned and improve over time. There are even some colleges now that are offering fishing scholarships. And some students are able to compete in tournaments where the payoff is scholarship money. Pretty good opportunities right now doing something that they will be able to do for the rest of their lives. These teams are non-curricular clubs within the Fargo and West Fargo school districts. It means the league is not a school-sanctioned sport. It does not receive funding from the school districts. They do, however, get great support from several sponsors, including Shields and Lund Boats. Other kids were fishing tonight, too, at the River Arts Fishing Clinic in Moorhead. From casting to water safety, there were multiple interactive stations. Kids not only learned about the fishing opportunities offered in our area, they walked away with a special fishing kit, including bobbers, hooks, and weights. Some kids received their very own Valley News Live Lure. We want kids to learn how to fish so that they can ultimately help take care of the river and enjoy it in safe ways. If you're interested, check out Riverkeeper's website for a list of future events. Robert Mueller, the former special counsel and author of the Russia Report, testifies in front of Congress for the first time tomorrow. Greta Van Susteren breaks down what to expect from Capitol Hill. The wait is over. Former special counsel Robert Mueller will testify before Congress on Wednesday. He faces questions from lawmakers on the House Judiciary and Intelligence Committees about Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. It found instances of the president uh, uh, instructing people to lie to investigators and to lie to the American people. And the American people need to hear this from Mueller. Mueller says he plans to stick to the script and will not give any information beyond the report. Republicans say this investigation has gone on long enough. Director Mueller himself has said that his report is his testimony that ought to be respected and that ought to be accepted. Although people from all over the country will be watching Mueller's highly anticipated testimony, there is one person who will not be glued to the TV, or so he says. I'm not going to be wa watching Mueller uh, because uh, you can't take all those bites out of the apple. Republicans are downplaying this hearing, saying the public will not learn anything new. Democrats say something else, that it is vital to hear Mueller get questioned about his report. Bottom line, as Mueller sticks to his report, expect the questions from both Democrats and Republicans to sound more like speeches than questions. And premiering on September 8th, Greta Van Susteren will provide in-depth analysis on Valley News Live every Sunday. Full Court Press with Greta Van Susteren shines a spotlight on the local impacts of national politics. Dogs of all shapes and sizes strutted their stuff this evening at the 29th Annual Paws Walk. The fundraiser aims to help homeless cats and dogs at the Homeward Animal Shelter. There were snack stations and waiting pools to help the pups cool off. She's lazy. She's very lazy. She likes to be held a lot. Uh, we just kind of quit walking and then she just wants to be held. I have rescues of my own. I think it's a great foundation. I love that they take in animals um, and help them out. And I mean, they never say no. So they're always willing to help out people and, and you know, make it work with, um, even if they're full, they'll make it work. Hundreds of people showed up with their beloved dogs for the half mile walk. 
Valley News Live 10 at 10 continues with No Wait Weather. And a beautiful night for a walk it was. We begin with our Storm Team Skycam Network view from Luther Family Ford. And we are very quiet tonight. Some of those clouds starting to break as well. 76, your temperature, calm wind. Dew points, well, they're near 60, so a little bit of humidity in the air tonight. Temperatures holding in the low 70s in Lakes Country, 69 in Bedette, and 66 this hour in Bemidji, 68 Valley City. And very quiet is the radar. The satellite showed a few clouds earlier this afternoon drifting over the valley. Those are starting to push off to the east. And still, our showers in the region, well, they're way out west in the Rocky Mountains. So another quiet night is expected with the only real concern being some patchy areas of fog in the morning. Temperatures in the low 60s for the vast majority of us. Then going through the morning, it's going to seem like a repeat performance of Tuesday. Beautiful conditions, sunny skies, and light winds. In the midday to afternoon, the winds, though, in our western counties and eastern and central portions of North Dakota will pick up, gusting over 20 miles per hour at times. We'll heat up back into the low to mid 80s for many areas as we see another batch of clouds work their way in for the evening. Overall, it looks like we stay dry, but thunder returns to the forecast for Thursday. More on that in one moment. First thing in the morning, stepping out the door, temperatures near 60 degrees. We ramp things up into those 80s for the midday afternoon clouds. And do remember to hold on to the hat. Gusts over 20 miles per hour likely, particularly from the Red River Valley and points west. 85 in Grand Forks tomorrow. Looks like 82 for Langdon, 80 in Oaks. And off in Lakes Country, temperatures near 80 for most of western Minnesota as well. All right, on Thursday in the afternoon and evening, a weather system moves through where you see the yellow shaded areas where we're expecting the best chance for a few severe storms capable of large hail and damaging wind. We cannot rule out an isolated tornado. And by the way, the areas shaded in dark green, including Grand Forks, Valley City and Lisbon, could see a couple of stout storms in those areas. We'll keep our eyes on that as we approach, but take a look at another great shot. This one by Paul. Little Sand Lake looking absolutely glass-like and delightful. Thursday's thunder comes after a very warm day. And we'll keep the heat on Thursday and Friday as well with temperatures on Saturday near 90 degrees. Spotty showers and thunder showers on Sunday. Cool things off a little bit. And overall, our seven-day forecast looks fairly quiet. And, you know, nothing too hot, nothing too cold. Nothing too stormy, except for Thursday. And nothing too stormy. We'll watch Thursday for you. Thank you. You bet. Later on Valley News Live 10 at 10, three West Fargo students are in Las Vegas right now thanks to an innovative scholarship, what they hope to gain right after this break.